In this video, we're going to look at the concepts covered in Chapter 9, Hypothesis Testing. And I'm not going to go over the entire chapter, but we're going to look at a couple of hypothesis tests that are important, uh, which will be used, the concepts behind those hypotheses will be used in Chapter 10. So I'm going to go over those basics. Then you have to look at the Excel tutorials and complete the exercises using the Excel tutorial videos. Now we start hypothesis testing by stating a set of two hypotheses. One is called the null hypothesis and we will denote that null hypothesis with the symbol H sub 0 and that represents the widely held belief or the status quo situation. And then you have the alternative hypothesis which is the logical opposite of null hypothesis. And usually you will put a condition that you want to prove in the alternative hypothesis. So that way when you reject the null hypothesis you would have proved that the alternative hypothesis is true. If you put it the other way around and when you do not reject the null hypothesis, technically speaking that does not mean that you have proved the null hypothesis. So even if you accept the null hypothesis you cannot claim that you proved it because that is the way in which the hypothesis is conducted. You start out assuming, okay, we'll assume null hypothesis is true and then see whether the evidence proves that assumption to be false. So if you do not find enough evidence to show that that null hypothesis is false, that only means that you have not found the evidence opposite to that and not in favor, I mean you cannot claim that you have found the evidence in favor of the null hypothesis and therefore the condition that needs to be proved should go as the alternative hypothesis and we will denote alternative hypothesis with the symbol H sub A. Now we have to collect sample data and based on the sample data we have to make a decision about the hypothesis. Now let's look at what forms the null and alternative hypothesis will take and we'll use mu as the mean of the population and mu sub 0 is a constant value that is assumed in the hypothesis so it can be any number so mu sub 0 here represents a number mu represents the unknown population mean mu and there are three different forms in which the hypothesis can be set up the first form is mu greater than or equal to mu sub 0 against the alternative which is the opposite mu less than mu sub 0. Then the mirror image of that one tail test is mu less than or equal to mu sub 0 and the logical opposite in the alternative which is greater than mu sub 0. And these two are called one tail tests because the rejection will appear in one of the two tails of the normal distribution. Whereas a hypothesis like this mu equal to mu sub 0 and mu not equal to mu sub 0, the rejection region can will appear in both tails and therefore it is called a two tail test. And also notice that in each of these three cases the equality part appears with the null hypothesis and that is generally true in all cases. So if you put the equal to sign in the alternative hypothesis that means you made a mistake at the very beginning itself. So you must always put the equal sign in the null hypothesis and never in the alternative hypothesis. The second thing you should note is that any hypothesis when you state it, it has to be in one of these three different forms. If it is not in any one of these three different forms, that means you have not stated the hypothesis correctly. So there, is, there are some rigid technical rules here in figuring out what the hypothesis should look like and that should guide you in setting up the hypothesis correctly. Okay, so it has to be one, only one of these three and the other thumb rules that you can use is widely held belief goes in the null hypothesis and the statement that you want to prove if there is one such statement that you are you know that that has to be proved that statement should go in the alternative hypothesis. So these are all general rules that can guide you in setting up the hypothesis correctly. Now, we, in order to conduct the test, we have to understand that there are a couple of different errors that can come into play when you make a decision. We're going to make the decision based on a sample 
and therefore we cannot be 100% sure that the decision that we are making is correct. We want to make sure that the decision we are making is correct most often. That's the best we can do. We cannot, in statistical analysis, achieve 100% error-free decision. So there are two types of errors that are possible. One is called type 1 error, and that is rejecting a null hypothesis that is actually true. You, you, you didn't realize that based on the sample, you rejected it. And that is called type 1 error. And we can compute the probability of making a type 1 error, and that probability is called the p-value. And the maximum allowed p-value that can be tolerated, and we can still reject the null hypothesis, is called the level of significance alpha. And we will use this concept in coming up with the rejection rule when we actually conduct the hypothesis. Now, the other error is type 2 error. This is the error when the null hypothesis is actually false, but based on the sample, you are not rejecting it. You are accepting the null hypothesis. And that would be an error too. And that error is type 2 error. And the probability of type 2 error, probability of committing type 2 error is difficult to control. And that goes by the notation beta. And we will not discuss uh, type 2 error in, at length in this chapter because we are only reviewing chapter 9. And we try to avoid making type 2 error. And therefore, we never say accept HO when you are not able to reject. So we use the phrase do not reject HO instead of accept HO. So when we reject HO, we say reject HO. And we when we don't reject HO, don't say accept HO, you simply say do not reject H sub O. Now here are the four possibilities. You know, the population condition HO can be true or HO could be false. We don't know that. And based on the sample, we are making the conclusion either accept HO, well actually do not reject HO or reject HO. And under these two conditions, we would have made the correct decision and we hope that the, our, that the sampling procedure, the testing procedure will land us in these two cells most often. But there are occasions when the HO is true, we re end up rejecting HO and that would be type 1 error or HO is false but we do not reject it and that would be type 2 error. 